Good evening. My name is Clint Stamen. I've been working in the trades for the past 24 years. The pictures you are about to see represent the recent decade, where I feel that the journey toward a creative lifestyle began to take shape. They are a collection of both individual and collaborative works. Some are places in which I have traveled to work. I am the owner of a small design build firm called Kensho, which I started about seven years ago after a failed business partnership. I started Kensho seeking validity through success, which I felt would confirm my societal standing as a creative person. I was certain my ideas were going to change society for the better, and I was going to get paid, too. <laughs> Optimism abounded at first. I was full of ideas and dreams. I had read through countless lifestyle design magazines and scoured the interweb for hours. Stumble Upon was an endless rabbit hole for amazing lifestyle accoutrements. I was dead set in my belief that anyone who saw how cool these pieces were was certain to buy one for themselves. I decided to share my thoughts and ideas with anyone who would listen. Everyone I talked to agreed with me. These pieces were really cool. But to my surprise, no one seemed ever interested in actually paying me to make them one. It was hard to imagine. An opportunity to reject societal norms seemed perfectly logical to me. <clears throat> bills came as bills do, and I decided it may be better to survive as a home improvement contractor than not to survive at all. It was tough to shelve the idea of following in my late grandfather's footsteps. Perhaps furniture making might become a hobby one day. Perhaps not. At least I had the hope to hang my hat on. <clears throat> I persisted the first few years taking any job that came my way. Sure, it wasn't the glamorous lifestyle I had imagined or dreamed of, but the lights were still on and old Mother Hubbard didn't visit quite as often anymore. Life was a grind, but I was hungry and stubborn. The word quit has never been in my vocabulary. It was quite hard at the time to realize the direction my life was heading. All the years of influence from growing up in a family of entrepreneurs, my involvement in the farming community of Lancaster, and the various trades I found employment in has provided me with a rather broad skill set. It was this skill set that was beginning to set me apart. I was a musician throughout my childhood. Music was an avenue for me to travel and to see the world. I continued that journey locally here in New York after high school, playing in different bands for several years. I've been blessed to meet so many amazing people, but it was a gig at a private party that would change my life several years later. York is a small community, so running into the same person infrequently doesn't seem so random. It feels more like the two degrees of Bacon's Law, making it easy to be dismissive of anything that might cause pause as an odd occurrence. Lightning struck twice within a couple month period, and a phone call changed my life's direction drastically. I was given a single key that unlocked two doors. One door was to a physical world, where creativity was paramount to success. The other door led to a world limited only by my imagination. There were people who were seeking that imagination, and they were willing to pay me for it. It was hard to believe that a place like this even existed. As we all know, you can't wear the rose-colored glasses forever. Time begins to tarnish everything that was once shiny and new. Spending countless hours alongside others in the creative trenches can reveal the ugly stains we are all marred with as humans. The battle of wills to see whose idea ousts the others can cause dissension among the ranks. I have to admit that the re-entry to Earth wasn't pleasant, to say the least. This odyssey seemed to be crumbling around me, and it was hard not to think that perhaps I just wasn't meant for the creative lifestyle. Maybe it all really was too good to be true. It was deflating, and doubt began to pervade my thoughts. My faith is strong, and my optimism eternal, so I decided I needed a change in perspective. As Stuart Smalley once said, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. I had to shake this self-doubt. What did I bring to the table that made me unique and valuable to the dreams I was trying to achieve? I don't know about any of you, but when I was a kid, I loved those little battery-operated matchbox cars. Tearing them down and then trying to figure out how to put them back together was fun. I'm pretty sure I ended up with a case full of parts, but that didn't really matter. I realized that I love solving problems. <clears throat> it felt good to realize a role in which I could be creative. Being able to tackle challenges head on when the success of the project relies on a seemingly impossible solution. It allowed me to humble myself to others' ideas and I found great joy in being part of a larger whole, regardless of success or defeat. Teamwork does make the dream work.
It felt wood rots and metal rusts. It's not specifically the things I make which define me, but the actual making itself. It refines and renews both my character and my spirit. It teaches me every day. I'm blessed with hands that have created some amazing works, both on my own and with others, some of who are seated here this evening. I'm amazed every day by the power of each of these bits of knowledge I have learned over the years. They have allowed me to be part of some amazing opportunities. I've been able to travel across the U.S. and to the Caribbean for work, and also overseas to South Korea. I can honestly say I never imagined any of those things would ever be possible. The biggest surprise I have had through my pursuit of my craft happened five years ago. I was volunteering to support a local startup that would allow others to develop their skill sets in a makerspace. Little did I realize, I was working alongside my then-to-be wife. You'll get to meet her tonight because, well, she's speaking after me. <clears throat> I can honestly say that the journey hasn't always been easy, though. Despite all of the challenges, I have had the privilege to work for some amazing clients and with some amazing people. People whose keen eyes have appreciated the attention to detail that have been a strong guiding principle for me in my practice and in my life. It's hard to say where this road will take me in the future, but I firmly believe that good design is timeless. It transcends fleeting styles and shows its beauty through simplicity. Sometimes the loudest statements are when nothing is said at all. I want to thank everyone for the opportunity to share my story with you this evening. Thank you.